This is Crypto Core Radio, discussing the ideas, people, and projects building the new digital economy. Get the latest on blockchain technology and cryptocurrency updates with your host, Lutz. Hello and welcome to Core Radio. This is Lutz coming to you live early in the morning here in New York City. And we have a very, uh, we have a whole group of people on today. Uh, they all showed up, you know, because they heard I was going to be on. And they said, hey, you know, everyone's got to be here. So we have the whole Dovu team on with us today. And uh, hey guys, say hello. Welcome to the show. Hey, hi. Uh, yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, good. Great to be here. How are you doing? Is this, uh, so we have Irvine, James, and Tom, right? Correct. That's right, yeah. And Arwen is somewhere there in the background. Yeah, she's staying quiet. Drinking all the coffee. Outrageous. So uh, you guys are, are having a, an ICO. And uh, it's, I, I know there's a lot of partnerships involved with this particular ICO. Uh, what, what is, so Dovu, D-O-V-U. Well, I mean, where, where did you come up with that name? What's that stand for? Um, it doesn't stand for anything, really. Uh, I think just really like the name. And um, I think it's for sugar and for sugarcane. And, uh, and, you know, it's a sweet business. All right. And uh, just give us a gist, you know, we'll go deeper into it. But, you know, give us a, an idea about what Dovu is going to bring to the market for us. I think what we discovered really when we looked at the whole transport mobility sector is that uh, what was missing was well, actually it's not so much what was missing, but there was a lot of friction, friction involved in getting data from one point to another and friction involved in actually the, the transfer of value across borders. And, and also the, the sort of, a, there's a lack of trust really from some of the um, existing mobility companies, some of, especially sort of, uh, if you look at history of car companies, not really open to uh, opening up data to third parties. So, um, really where we come from really is to remove the friction and the ability to use blockchain as a measure of trust, uh, crypto as a sort of value that can be transferred globally, frictionless, uh, and a sector that is exploding in innovation um, just needs a, it needs a token, it needs a currency to make that happen. And that's really why we're here. Right. And yeah, as we can see, people are tokenizing everything these days. I'm going to tokenize gonna my to radio show. Yeah, you know, and I think there's a, there's a time and a place for it, and I think it's, uh, um, at some point, I think the whole sector will settle down. Um, some tokens have real utility and real value, and some uh, uh, are pure speculation. You know, we're building a real business with really valuable investors, you know, core strategic partners, and, uh, and we, we absolutely passionately believe that uh, the time is right, you know, for a, uh, for a token to sort of uh, participate in this rapidly changing transport and mobility sector. So, so from a, you know, a blue collar worker point of view, from, you know, an average Joe point of view, how is this going to work for me? How am I going to use it? Yeah, that's a good question. I think, um, you know, our vision is if you look at some of the user cases, so right now, if you let's take a car, for example, you know, right now, when you get in your car and you drive, you're, you're giving off a huge amount of data. Your car is, you are, um, you know, how do you get rewarded for that data right now? Well, you, you probably don't. Um, so what we want to do is use uh, the, the, the Dover token as a, as a way of you getting some value for, for, your, um, for the, your sort of kilometers or miles traveled. So if you're traveling in a car from New York to Boston, um, and you're given off a huge amount of data. Wouldn't it be great if you were rewarded for that data uh, and that went into your Dover wallet? And then you could then use those two tokens in order to pay for other transport services that you want. Um, where, you know, is that, where is that? Where is that? Where's that value derived from? You know, because you know, technically, when when you use miles on your car, it just means your car is getting old. Yeah, I think the the um, yeah, but also your car is also given details off and data off about how old it's getting. 
and really where the where the areas of your car going forward are, are, are breaking down. So let's say your brakes need to be replaced. There's a huge amount of data there. Somebody would like that data in order for to provide you with um, some information about where you should go and get your brakes replaced. Uh, if your tires are a little flat, then you know you should go and, uh, and, and top that up with some air. You know, um, there's a huge amount of data that you're giving off and you're not getting value for right now. And just simple things, if you're in a traffic buildup somewhere, then you're giving off data. Right now, you're giving it to Google, and Google will use that in their Google Maps, or they'll use it in ways. You know, uh, why, why can't you get rewarded for that? So there's a whole raft of things that can be, um, you know, you know, data that can that is of value that right now the consumer is not getting fairly rewarded for. We want to change that. So, so how does that, uh, so how does that information, that data, get to where it's got to go? You say, you said Google, right, is taking that information. Where, where's, how do they know how many miles I have on my car? You know, is it something I have to report when I'm done driving, or is there, there a method by navigation that they're taking it? How is, like, I, I don't understand how it's going to get from point A to point blockchain. No, I appreciate that. No, I think we're separating out uh, you as the driver as opposed to the car itself. So if you're looking at the car itself, the telematics that has been built up within the car, um, absolutely are being given to somebody. Um, but the data that Google would be capturing, my reference to Google really is the data that you're capturing from your mobile phone if you've got your Google apps open, which is just saying, hey, look, there's 30 people stationary, you know, uh, therefore um, there's a traffic problem here on this on this route. And that's really the sort of crowdsourcing of data in order to inform the sort of uh, your 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 map. So on the car side of it, it's a completely different um, a different sort of uh, equation. So the car is storing and collecting all of that data, um, or it will be if it isn't at the moment. Uh, and then that data is going to be used either by the, the, the dealership, the car manufacturer, or somebody who the dealer or car manufacturer has got a relationship with, and they'll be selling that on. Um, okay. So you want to be, as a consumer, you want to be participating in that and getting some value from that. And if we take it on a little edge further into the sort of electric vehicle aspect of it, um, there was a study done sort of recently, I think over in Holland, really by Toshiba, in terms of the electric car market, where people were earning roughly about $1,300 every year for the electricity supply that the car had generated, and they were reselling that electricity back into the marketplace. So. Um, What's really interesting is that actually, again, if you can put in a frictionless token system, then there are loads, you know, there are a lot of different areas um, where the con consumer can get rewarded for the value that they create um, on the uh, on their transport journey, whether it's in a car or, or anything else. Okay, so th there might be particular niches that that may want this type of information, like you said, dealerships, uh, you know, may want to know when someone's car is getting older. And Google at this point does take some of the information, you know, to people from people who are using uh, Google Maps, and they they don't reward their the people that they're getting the information from. They actually make a lot of money off of it, and you never get anything for using it except for the utility. Uh, am, am am I getting this understood better now? Does that so sound about right? That, that, that's, a, that's one user case. You know, there are loads of other user cases. As I say, it's really about rewarding people, you know, within the whole mobility sector for the value that they create. And that's what we're trying to do. Whatever value that's been created, why not get rewarded for it? And I think that the combination of blockchain and a, and a cryptocurrency and a, and a Dogu token means that that reward may be, you know, a lot less than a dollar and maybe a lot less than 10 cents. You know, uh, and that's why a, a Dogu token is more relevant than uh, than a sort of fiat currency. Gotcha. Now, now the Dovu token—that's uh, an Ethereum token, I'm guessing. Yeah, that's correct. So uh, the, the the token uh, offering is, is is done using an ERC twenty uh, token. Um, the specifics of the uh, uh, the actual Dovu value wants. Once that's done, um, you know we will be looking into how that's actually uh, managed within the system itself. It might be that the uh, value ledger, as we call it, uh, it, it is potentially a separate blockchain itself. Um, but the, the the token that's used as the currency within the system will be based on Ethereum. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
Other than the car example, could, could you give me some other examples as to how your technology will be used? I, I'm just trying like, to I'm get a, to... you know, for, make pretend I know nothing about it. I'm trying to get a better, clearer understanding as to how this will be used. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I suppose one of the one of the big aspects of this is is not only is blockchain sort of an emerging uh, technology in in various different business sectors, but but mobility is is obviously undergoing massive change itself, both in terms of the way people. Uh, get from place A to place B to, to how people uh, actually pay for things. Um, the, the first thing that uh, we have as a product is Dobu uh, Marketplace, which I, I suppose the probably the nearest uh, thing that you could liken that to would be like sort of a rapid API solution, which facilitates um, data providers being able to easily plug their APIs into that. So Dobu is all about respecting uh, the, the, the data players within the sort of marketplace. So you've got the data owner, the person injecting the data into the system. You've got the data provider that's probably adding value to it. So in the case of Jaguar Land Rover, that might be um, information coming from the vehicle itself. And then you've got the data consumer, which is, could be anyone from a single developer in their bedroom uh, doing a mashup with, with that data through to uh, insurance companies that might want to know more information about um, how people are driving, where they're driving, sort of weather conditions they're driving in. So. Um, and, and I'll jump in, it, it goes well beyond the car, of course, you know, so people are already using uh, applications on their phone, maybe to, for example, uh, buy, buy bus tickets. So, you know, it could be that if you've got an app um, that, that, that's ready to work with the, the, the Dobu protocol, then the bus company might see, for example, that there's a lot of people walking on a route where there's, where there's not a bus route, and they, they'd be interested in that kind of information as well. So it's about really um, vehicles, but also individuals, or, or any um, uh, Internet of Things device uh, you know, connected um, is able to offer up that kind of information about transport. Um, okay. Okay, so, okay, so... so so once you have this information, which I'm not sure yet where you're going to get it from, is that for, you're going to get it from people's mobile phones, this information? Yeah, this statistics, the these statistics? statistics? Yeah, so data will come from multiple points. Ultimately, we're a protocol, so we'll work with service providers. So we'll work with partners who have apps that are used by the wider consumer. You know, for a multiple of you know, different things. We'll work with partners such as uh, car manufacturers, um, and we'll work with um, partners, you know, such as sort of uh, train, train sort of operators and a whole range of different mobility and transport providers. So our strength really is that we're coming at it from a, um, a partnership and a, you know, a, a, a wide ranging, you know, sort of uh, strength of relationships really with the transport sector and then we'll work with the um the services and the apps and uh, that connect to the consumer okay so so like i said you're getting the statistics from mo what we'll say mobile phones for now because that's that's what i'm understanding that information is going to go to interested parties who are going to be the buyers of your service, correct? So that you you mentioned the Jaguar Land Rover is a partner. Yeah, so they're an investor in our business, um, and they've been a keen supporter of uh, of what we've been doing from the start. Uh, and if you look at their um, uh, and uh, as I say, so so from a from a from a um, from a partnership perspective, they're a great sort of global partner to have. But it isn't just about them; it's about sort of, as I say, the wider, the wider sort of car manufacturing sort of um, community as well. But also, it isn't just about cars. As I say, it's about all transport and all mobility. So the, um, you know, where we get our data from will be uh, um, from right across that sort of that that community. How that data is consumed and delivered back to the consumer will be through our decentralized apps and the partnerships that we have that are built in our protocol and and then how other people contribute to that sort of community in terms of adding value will be again varied so um you know it's it's really a, as i say we're building a blockchain community on our protocol and you know where all value is is measured 
and all value has a um, you know has a doom token price, which would, again will be set by the community. I, I've been hit with metrics before. People want to know all, all kinds of metrics. Uh, so the the metrics you're getting will be given to these you know companies, correct? And then they're going to be uh, they're going to people giving this information to you who are giving it to these companies will be rewarded, compensated through the token. How do they get How rewarded they get through the rewarded? price through of the, the price token, of going, the token higher? going higher? Yeah, sure. So I, I, I mean, I suppose for, from our perspective, that's where the, the utility aspect sort of is, is really key. And, and the Dovu marketplace means that um, data consumers and data providers are, are free to basically determine the value in that data. Um, we, we hope to get to the point where people are being rewarded accordingly. I suppose the world in which we live in is that, that that's not always the case. Those data providers might just choose to pass that data through the system. But, but hopefully um, we, will, uh, we will be able to actually uh, deliver value back to the actual data owners that put the data into the system in the first place. Um, and the way we intend to do that is by signing that data. So through the, through the initial creation of the data right through to the point of consumption that data is signed um, and, and when that data is consumed um, using smart contracts, the value is delivered back to the original uh, owner of the data. All right. Uh, so so let, let's get to the ICO part of this. Uh, I, th I think I'm starting to understand that a lot better now. Uh, anybody that's listening right now, if you have any questions, please ask them in the Core Media channel, in our Core Media Slack. And uh, I'll make sure to ask them uh, your questions. So uh, let's let's get down to the ICO part. Uh, tell me about the ICO and how it's structured. You know, sometimes there's phases, right? Sometimes there's a uh, early bird phase. Sometimes it's structured in a way where everybody, you know, puts in, and then at the end, you know, it's divided proportionally through uh, percentages. Yeah. So. Um... You know, our token sale is basically we're offering 25% of the of the tokens that we've created to uh, within this token sale. We're having a pre-sale that launches on uh, the 4th of September. Um, that pre-sale will end on the 29th of September, and uh, it, within that, within and then we'll go live uh, to the public on the uh, 3rd of October, and that will finish on the 17th. So. Um, yes, when we go live in the uh, as a, within our token sale on the third of October, we'll have tiered structures, um, and you know we the objective really is to get sort of wide token distribution, and we want as many um, individuals and uh, who want to sort of um, you know buy into that token and use that within our community to get involved as possible. Okay, uh, it's. So if I wanted to get in, if I got in earlier than other people, would I be rewarded with more coins? Yeah, we'll have a tiered structure um, that will run. So we're going to do two tiers in our structure um, and we'll sort of notify people of exactly how that tier structure works closer to the time. Okay. And uh, how about transparency? You know, in these day, this day and age, a lot of people are looking at transparency of companies and how the funds are used. Uh, will you guys be offering some type of transparency where people could see where the funds are going? Their investment? Yeah, their investment. Uh, yeah look, uh, you know, I think unlike some sort of uh, to token sales, we, we're already set up as a, as a, as a you know, um, UK company. Uh, we have corporate investors as, uh, on board. We have a whole structure which, is, which involves corporate governance. You know, we have um, advisors such as KPMG on board. Um, so in terms of transparency and structure and how we go about utilizing funds and building our business, everything will be, um, you know, will be communicated to our token holders in a very transparent way. You mentioned corporate uh, companies on board. Who, who are, are you allowed to mention their names? Well, as I say, so we, our, our um, seed investment really came through InMotion, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of Jaguar Land Rover. So InMotion are the venture fund for Jaguar Land Rover. So um, they were the ones who first bought into the vision of what we created. 
and, uh, and there are sort of uh, initial corporate uh, investors. And obviously, as a result of that, that enables us to have, um, you know, to, to build some really interesting partnerships across the whole, you know, uh, transport sector. Okay. Uh, hmm. So, so I'm, I, it's, I didn't really get the answer to, to that transparency. Will, will people be able to get to see where the funds are going or no? Yeah, so I mean, in, in terms of the, um, you know, where we're spending our, 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 our investment capital, um, there will be full transparency in terms of where that, where that capital is um, to, be, to be spent. Um, in line with our obligations to sort of report all of our, all of our investments through to all of our, um, all of our shareholders, really. Ah, uh -huh. yeah. In the crypto world, you're not allowed to call them shares. Are you guys yeah, no, going to be uh, legit, legal? Legit, legal? Yeah. So when I talk about shareholders, we are already set up as a UK legal entity, and as a UK legal entity, we already have shareholders. So I want to, you know, separate out that shareholder comment from our token, um, but it's shareholders that we have as a UK limited company. Gotcha. Let's talk about your team. So. Tell tell me a little bit about each one of you, so you know each one of you guys, and what's your experience, uh, you know, in this industry. So hi, this is Urban. I'm um, talking now, so I'll talk about myself. So my my background really is in um, uh, I've set up multiple companies. Uh, so the last company that I set up was a company called Cool, which is um, separate to transport and separate to blockchain, but it's a. a um, programmatic video advertising technology company. So we built that up globally to deliver around about 50 billion video views every month. Um, um, so the, the ability to pull together a, a technical team, build partnerships and build scale efficiently, the value of shareholders is something that I've been involved in for, for, for quite some time. So I think a seasoned entrepreneur really with uh, an ability to deliver value is uh is my pedigree all right okay. tom tom yeah thanks um i've been in technology forever i sometimes like to sort of joke i've, I've never really had a proper job <laughs> so i've been co coding um so with with the web since sort of 95 96 and in that time i suppose um a lot of my work has been involved in api and data interchange from one place to another and, and uh, delivering api and, and Every form, so for, from the perspective of, of Uvu and uh, what we're looking to achieve, I think it's really well placed. I suppose in recent years, my uh, my work has been uh, building out and putting together technology teams, seeing sort of technology at, at a high level. And um, I still like to program from time to time, but I do a little bit less of that these days. Gotcha. I hear a lot of words like technology and high level. Uh, what 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 exactly do you like to program? C plus, uh, Lisp. You know, I'm I'm a network yeah, engineer I'm myself. A network engineer. <laughs> Great. I uh, yeah. To be honest, I, uh, I most of the stuff I do is web based. So um, we do we do a lot of mobile development. So uh, we're using a lot of React Native at the moment for mobile stuff, which is pretty good. You can get out to cross platform stuff. Um, I've been involved in ASP back in the day, PHP, C sharp, um, that, that sort of thing. Really, web based technology. Gotcha. Uh, CSS. HTML. I think CSS is a bit of a black art. I've got some very clever people that somehow managed to keep uh, keep on top of that stuff. But uh, CSS has never really been my bag. But <laughs> I've done a bit of HTML in my time, that's for sure. Well, you, you mentioned the web, right? So everything regarding the web is is usually in, inside some type of uh, markup language like HTML, right? Yeah, absolutely. And actually, you know, from an API perspective, um, back in the day uh, xml was what everyone was using now 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 it's all moved over to json and 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 where you know where performance is required it go, go, going even sort of lighter than that and and i think that um you know that's that those are going to be some of the technolo technology challenges that we face with those is streamlining the process and making sure that it's really easy for these large providers to be able to get their data out to a marketplace uh, quickly because they 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 don't really have the development technology in house to 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 do that. So we want to simplify the process for them. 
Gotcha. Uh, are are you the, the the deep coder that that could tell me all about how this is going to work? Because I, I'd love to hear some technical details. Yeah. So I mean, a lot of the technical details at the moment we, we are uh, still developing. We've got the alpha uh, ready to go for the marketplace, and that's uh, that's a really interesting product. We we're using um, primarily an open source stack there. Um, we're, we're uh, distributing that um, out to uh, currently an Amazon infrastructure, but there's no reason why it can't actually be deployed on premise um, and using Kubernetes to, to do that, which is uh, is hopefully going to give us the scalability we're looking for. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's lots I could say about that. I think in terms of the, the value ledger and stuff, those are some of the technical challenges that, that still face us as a business. and, and um, the, that that's probably uh, probably deeper from a coding level than, than I'm involved with these days. But mm -hmm. gotcha. So uh, and who's who else is there? James? Did we get James? Did we get James? Yeah. Hi. No, I haven't spoken yet. So uh, similarly to Tom, um, I've been involved in uh, digital production for my whole career, really. So plus twenty years um, from really when the, the the web just kind of was uh, becoming popular in the UK. Um, been director level in a couple of uh, software companies, uh, digital asset management software, content management, um, and for the last seven years or so, I've been working as a, a freelance consultant um, with various agencies and direct clients. Did quite a lot of work for uh, Google and, and some of their um, their sub brands as well, building uh, internal tools, uh, kind of marketing products, stuff like that. Um, mainly the past year working working with apps, etc. But my, um, I kind of alongside that have an interest in economics, uh, geopolitics, uh, and that's what kind of first got me really interested in in Bitcoin and crypto, the, the kind of weaknesses of the of the fiat system that we have. So, so I've been kind of interested and in, invested in uh, Bitcoin for a couple of years now, um, kind of Litecoin, and then obviously uh, Ethereum came around and, and, and presented us with a lot of opportunities. So. I spent some time working on some proof of concepts with some teams there um, to find out, you know, what we what we could and couldn't do, and whether it would be suitable for what what we want to do. Um, yeah, uh, introduced uh, to Irvon back in May, um, and been working uh, together to produce the platform ever since. What? So, where do you where do you see Dovu going in the future with just you personally? Um, so I think there's a, a whole vast, um, you know, expanse of opportunity really. Um, initially now, it's, yeah, it's about, it's going to kick off with, with data that gets served through our API marketplace, but it's really looking to the future as to where the, the connections of those different data can be mashed up to find, to find value that, that maybe that we haven't perceived yet. And that's, that's the exciting thing, you know, we're offering the protocol and we're offering the, the platform um, really, for for others to take advantage of, and, and, and really take us into this into the emerging kind of connected car, Internet of Things, smart cities. Um, just to, there's a whole kind of wealth of, of opportunity that we get to see. Right, you got the Internet of Things. You know, when my refrigerator runs out of milk, it lets me know. Yeah, indeed, indeed. And you know, there's somebody out there that could profit from that. Maybe the people who sell milk. I, I see where I you're going with this. So, how, how excited how, how are you guys excited. about this project? I want to. Let me. I, I, I want to hear some enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> We're very excited. I mean, I, I think the, the the thing that we, you know, the the challenges that we've got is that, is that for us, it, the the blockchain play is is, we you know we want to make sure it's not the tail wagging the dog. This is a real business. With real opportunities, the mobility sector is moving as fast as the uh, blockchain space, and, and just trying to keep that in focus, really, and make sure that we deliver uh, world-class technology that uh, data providers that don't have the time, skills, or possibly even the finance to get this stuff out to market can actually do that with their data and and reward people accordingly. Yeah, look, I mean, don't, don't, don't confuse sort of, you know, tone of speech to lack of enthusiasm. I think it's just the, uh, it's a great sort of, you know, we're at you know, the US and the... And we're the British, US, and the, yeah, right? yeah. It's a jolly good opportunity. Yeah. Tom, Tom, Tom sounds, yeah. like, Tom the sounds like the ladies' man. man. <laughs> He's the ladies' man. He, 
in the bunch. When you guys <laughs> go to the bar, he's the, the bar, one that picks up the chicks, right? The chicks, right? I, I, Don't tell I, his I, wife I, Absolutely not. <laughs> happily married. <laughs> Ooh, happily married. I will, I will tell you why, bro. <laughs> Yeah, no, we just have a different approach. We're really excited about what we're doing because what, what, what's, what we're excited about is actually the response to what it is that we're building, you know, from real businesses that want to help us get there. And, you know, we won't get there on our own. We'll get there, you know, through the help of our token holders. We'll get there through the help of the partnerships that, 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 that are excited, as excited about what we're doing as we are uh, ourselves. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a fascinating process, this whole token sale um, process and um, you know it's uh, it's certainly uh, exciting. It, it, that in itself is exciting, but what's more exciting is the business that we're going to be building at the end of it. Gotcha. Do you guys have some type of MVP? You know, some type of alpha or beta product that people could test at this point in time? Yeah, at the, at the moment we've got the uh, alpha of the API marketplace. It's not uh, live and ready for consumption yet, but uh, we're 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 looking at uh, uh, hackathons and stuff to bring developers in to to get working with that, and we'll be in, we'll be developing that out further. Um, the infrastructure is in place; it's just not live yet. The the next step is to begin to kind of wrap APIs and make them available. So you know, we've started with a couple of open source ones that are there. Um, but we're beginning to, to yeah, work with partners on, on exclusive data sets and APIs. And, um, we, we, you know, wherever possible, we're, we're trying to leverage o open technology. So for documentation, we're using um, Swagger format, which you might have heard of, which, which has sort of been picked up widely in the community from a documentation standpoint. So, um, we, you know, we might, uh, we'll, we'll be able to, we'll be able to give out more information about that in due course. Is there a, a website people could go to or is a video they could watch somewhere, you know, that they could see maybe how it will work? Yeah, we'll be putting up some, uh, we'll put up a video really of how we, how the API sort of uh, marketplace is working. And, you know, specifically around the marketplace is the abstraction levels of the APIs, the ability to take, you know, a couple of APIs together and then sort of uh, abstract them and then unify them into, into a single line of code. That's really one of the value adds, and uh, there'll be some sort of uh, demonstrations around that. So the idea is that we'll be introducing that through this process, um, alongside introducing some of the other activities that are going on, such as uh, we're doing a hackathon with Jaguar Land Rover in Slovakia, uh, where we're pulling together sort of unique data sources, working with about 150 developers sort of over there on uh, using the whole Dogu platform in order to add value to the data sources coming out of Jaguar Land Rover. So we'll be getting, we'll be sort of promoting and uh, talking a little bit more about that over the, over the coming days, uh, alongside sharing more of the, the data around the, the core technologies we go out. Look, you know, where we're at is really exciting. And what's, what's great when we talk about the enthusiasm of where we're at, so you look at our, our advisory board, for example, and you look at sort of Lars uh, Claviter, who's come on board, Lars was one of the Ethereum board members um, when it sort of first started. Lars was chief technology officer of Rolls Royce uh, and now heads up there, um, moved out of the technology space from Rolls Royce and moved into the business unit. And he heads up their special sort of projects division, really looking at the customized Rolls Royces that some of their, their customers want. So, um, you know, Lars is very excited about the, the proposition of Dover. And to say, getting somebody like him, who's both the Ethereum board experience, as well as the, 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 the car and sort of transport sort of um, sector experience on board with this project is just hugely exciting. Nice, nice. And having partners with Jaguar, being partners with Jaguar Land Rover, I don't know about you guys, but Jaguars and Land Rovers are very expensive here in New York City. I, mean, I can't I can't touch one no way and it I, I probably would wouldn't want to I, I'm just a fanatic you know if I see a scratch I'm just gonna freak out so I'd, I'd rather just not have it well I think one thing that, that if you remove the sort of cost aspect it's sort of uh, it's, it's what you have to deliver is a premium value, um, service so you know by having customers and having sort of companies like that on board not only do they give us sort of the ability to, you know, sort of accelerate, excuse the pun, our ability to get our tokens out into the marketplace, but also, look, you know, we, we need to be delivering a premium service uh, because our investors are premium investors. 
Nice. Uh, is there is there any picture or you know something tangible where people could see that Jaguar Land Rover is, uh, you know, partnering partnering with you? Just yeah, for investors. Just for yeah, if you look at it, it's in the public domain, and if you look at our sort of um, social media channels, you know, where we communicate very effectively their involvement with us. So, you know, um, partner's probably the wrong word, but they're investors. So we're, we're sitting in their building right now. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so they, uh, as I say, they, they were seed investors through their, their, their um, business, which is called Emotion Ventures. And Emotion Ventures uh, invests in a number of mobility um, um, businesses. We are one of them. So uh, that's in the public domain. Um, and, uh, and I'm sure uh, you can find it or any of your listeners can find it. But if not, just go to our social channels and you'll find it there. We're going to have to interrupt this program to bring you a flash breaking message. Bitcoin has reached $4,624, an all time high once again. Now back to your regularly scheduled program. Thank you. Woo! All right, guys. While you were on air, we just broke the all-time high. That's exciting. Oh, my God. We're going to hit 5,000, guys. It's going to be nuts. Yeah, undoubtedly. Land Rovers for everyone. Yeah. I was going to say... You'll rethink your Land Rover, Range Rover strategy after after that announcement. I want a stretch Land Rover. <laughs> that that sounds very New York. So I, let's get. <laughs> oh man, everyone's excited. I, I'm, I'm watching the Slack. Everyone's going nuts. So uh, let's go back to. Uh, communication and participation uh tell me about your your crowd do you have a crowd is there a slack that you guys participate in mainly uh do you guys have a forum a blog uh how do people in your community for dovu you know communicate with each other yeah we use uh so um we don't use slack uh we've decided to um use discord for that as opposed to slack i think the security issues on slack are uh just too too dangerous right now around some of the token market deals that have been going on so um and then we have uh, um you know again on our um we have twitter uh a facebook page and use telegram as well as a way of communicating for our community to, to communicate with us those are the only ones that we deal with and uh um and outside of that if you if anybody gets any information from any other sort of form then it's not going to come from us Gotcha. And they, they could, uh, people who want to participate in, in any of those uh, medias can find the invites on your website? Yeah, they can. Yeah, it's all on, the, it's all on our website. Um, and that's, uh, you know, dovu.io. Dovu.io. Dovu. Just IO. Just IO. So if it comes from any other domain, it ain't us. You guys have a lot, of, sil- a lot of syllables. A lot of syllables. A lot of sorry, what? O U I O. Yeah, we like them. Hey, they they, they, they give you a lot of points. Uh, I was going to say, how many points in Scrabble do we get for that? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so let's. So, uh, so let's. Uh, I mean, I really wanted to get more technical. I'm not going to get more technical, you know, because people are. Not so technical when they listen to the show, but uh, maybe after the show we could we could talk a little more about technicals or even have another show just for the technical part of how everything's going to work once you guys get that all together. Uh, there is there is some investor questions, more investor questions I like to ask, like uh, marketing and education. How do you plan to educate your public on your product? Is, do you guys have a marketing team? Yeah, no, we 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 will, but I think the, really the core to us. Um, get an access to the public will be through. We have a partnership strategy, and I think that's as I say. So if we can work with with, with partners and clients such as uh, Jaguar and others, where they have access to millions of, of of consumers, that's the route to educate. I think the idea of um, spending 
you know, sort of excess amount of, of dollars or ether or Bitcoin um, when you can actually leverage global partnerships that have access to the consumer in our space. That's, that, that's what, you know, that's our strategy. So our strategy and our marketing strategy and our business development strategy will be to link with transport operators uh, and original equipment manufacturers like, um, like Jaguar and others in order to get access to, to the community. Is there a certain goal you're trying to reach as far as, you know, Bitcoin, like, you know, is there a cap, you know, how, how much money do you need to get your idea rolling? Um, our, uh, our token offering will get our, get our, our, our whole token economy um, functional and get us to a point where, um, you know, the business is sustainable and our community are using our tokens effectively. So we, we, we're raising enough money in order for us to um, achieve the goals that we want to set out. Um, I can't see any reason whatsoever of us needing to, to raise any further funds uh, for, for our business. Um, but, uh, but we're not ruling that out sometime way, way off in the future. But that, that, I think we're raising enough right now to achieve our goals. Okay. Uh, since you use the Ethereum, are you guys going to be using some type of smart contract system somewhere? Or, I mean, or you know, because at the moment ERC twenty tokens are very popular, but there are other tokens that could be used. Like Waves platform has a great token system. I think smart contracts are really at the heart of why we chose Ethereum um, as a as, as as the platform. So, um, especially when you're dealing with you know, sort of consumer data, when you're dealing with proprietary data, when you're breaking that down, I think that the ability for us to, um, you know, apply a smart contract to, to, to the utility token of the um, of Dogu is, is, is really at the heart of what we're trying to do. Um, this whole idea, of if this, then that, as a, as a contract related to a, um, an activity and a bit of value that's delivered is really at the heart of it. All right. Uh, where, where are you guys located? What, what country are you in? Uh, we're in the UK um, and our development is, 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 is here in the UK. Um, yeah, we're now sitting in an office in London and we have an office in Bristol as well, which is about an hour and a half west of London, um, overlooking the Irish Sea. Okay. And... Uh... I think I think we covered almost everything at this point. Hmm. Just going over my 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 questions here. Uh, is there is there anything you guys would like to add to this interview to get to educate people to educate about Dovu? Yeah, I mean, I I think from the technology perspective, the marketplace, you know, we're 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 really keen to do a demonstration of that to uh, the people that are interested in it, and uh, we'd be very happy to come back on after that. And, and, and engage with your audience of, around anything that, that might come up as a result of that. Well, demonstration would be great. I think, you know, investors want, want to see uh, utility. They want to see, well, do you, the, there's, a, there's an equation for value, right? Value equals utility plus warranty. That's the equation for value. All right, so the, you need something that, ha that could be utilized. It has utility. It could be used, right? And you need to know it's not going to break, right? War a warranty that it, it will be used and, it, you know, nothing else will take its place. Warranty, right? So once you have a utility, a very strong utility, and you have a very strong UNT, uh, uh, warranty, now you have value. And that goes with everything. Yeah, I mean, you can't. I can't disagree with that. I think that's one of the biggest issues in this space at the moment is people understanding uh, value generation. You know, a lot of people will tell you it's the perception of the product in the person's mind, but that's only temporary, right? So once once that fades, once the perception in people's minds fade, uh, then it comes down to the, the equation I just told you about. So... so Definitely, uh, Definitely see if uh, you could get us some type of working demo and, uh, you know, some type of alpha and you'll see that uh, I, you'll, you'll get a lot more people coming on board after that because even, even myself, I'd like to have something to play with, you know, something cool that, that I could play with. Yeah, of course, that, you know, that makes total sense.
and um, I suppose going back to that, that that value point, it's you know these things happen very quickly in the space that we're operating in. But the the mobility sector is uh, you know rapidly changing. But we're we're talking about some pretty major changes that are going to be taking a, a part you know in the next five to ten years, and we want to be there early doors with the right technology to facilitate some of that stuff. Um, you know, already you can catch a helicopter via Uber, right? You know, that who would have thought that five years ago? All right, very cool. Yeah, you're right. And uh, so, everybody, I, I want to thank you for coming on. You were, you were a great guest, guests plural. And uh, any any anything else you could you could leave us with before we we end the show? Do you guys have a Twitter? Yeah. So as I say, just follow us on social media. You know, uh, as I say, Twitter, Discord, Facebook, uh, Telegram. There are, you know, and then, and then obviously our, our, our website, which is uh, again dobu.io, and on there you'll see all of the uh, all of the information from what we're from what we're doing. I think, um, like I say, you know, the combination of technology and the combination of partnerships will make this uh, this token sort of get distributed and and utilized. And uh, one without the other is no good. So uh, technology on its own doesn't uh, doesn't make anything happen. You need uh, you need technology, you need business, you need execution, and we've got all three. Right. Well, it, it sounds like you definitely got the partnerships covered. Uh, I, I I personally would like to see more technology. I like to see how it works. You know, uh, if you guys some t have some type of MVP that you could send over to me, I and I could put it a link to it on the show. You know, when I publish it, that would be great. You know, so then you got two pieces of the puzzle right there. Yeah, I appreciate that. And, uh, and um, yeah, we'll respond to that. Fantastic. All right, guys. Well, thank you for coming on. Uh, don't pick up too many women tonight. All right. Don't drink too much. Uh, and if you want a Land Rover, uh, you probably will have it if you own a few Bitcoins. Uh, I mean, it's an omen. I mean, it's an omen. You guys came on the show, and Bitcoin just hit in all time. It's it's going higher, guys. We're at, we're at four thousand six hundred and fifty dollars right now. Yeah, they were just uh, the whole community was just waiting for us to attend the show. Basically, you know, you know, it's like maybe it was that. It could be. Maybe everyone's you know they want to get in on Dofu right now, and you know they're buying Bitcoin so that they could participate. I think you you nailed it. That's it. <laughs> That's definitely it, guys. It has to be. I, I mean, we, we got 41 people listening right now. So, you know, who knows? Maybe one, knows? Of, those Maybe one of those are really big whale. I'll tell, I'll tell my family to stop buying. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for coming on. Love you. And uh, everyone out there, uh, if you guys have any questions for Dovu, uh, you could reach them on their website. You could ask in slack or you could just send me a message a private message and uh I'll, I'll get those questions answered for you even if i have to contact them on skype and uh you know if you're an investor and you have questions uh let me know and thank you for coming on you guys are amazing and uh everybody enjoy your day it's still very it's early, still for very me. early for me <laughs> yeah, thanks. thanks. Thanks very much. Thanks. Have a thanks great day. Cheers, thanks everyone. All right, fellas. Good thanks. luck with your ICO, man. Uh, don't forget to come back on when you got technicals. We'll, we'll uh, look forward to it. Not testicles. I said technicals. Oh, okay. Well, we'll see what we can do with that as well. <laughs> All right, guys. Later. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for jo joining us today. I see we got quite a few people listening right now. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you. And uh, we're going to continue on. I think our next interview will be on Thursday. And it is not an ICO. Uh, it is User disconnected from your channel. It is going to be uh, a coin that's very old. And it's been around for a long time. And should be very, very interesting uh, to, to catch up with them and see what they've been up to. So uh, tune in on Thursday. And uh, this is Lutz. Love you all. Signing out. Supernet aims to give people their power back through technology by no longer needing to rely on third parties such as exchanges, banks and services, giving you privacy at the same time. 
Supernet Technologies is the most anonymous technology being worked on currently, with a team of developers working diligently daily. Supernet aspires to be a creative, innovative, state-of-the-art solutions provider, which provides individuals opportunity, personal satisfaction and value. You can find out more at www.supernet.org and join our Slack with over 2,500 people.